Not a day goes by when Hollywood isn't tripping over its own two feet. Amazon released the Fallout series to mostly positive reviews, both from the normies and from the fans. But it didn't stop the producers from attacking fans and calling them toxic. But how are fans toxic if they actually like the show? And is the show as bad as producers think fans think it is? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the wasteland and the world of Fallout. Reviews of the Fallout TV series have already started trickling in, including one from the critical drinker himself, and they're actually not that bad. We were all bracing ourselves for a heavy dose of toxic feminism, DEI, and progressive messaging, but our expectations were very pleasantly subverted. As a fan of Fallout, I can honestly say the show captured the look, feel, themes, and general aesthetic of the games, and the story was pretty damn good. It really felt like Fallout 5 in essence. The Fallout TV series begins about nine years after the events of Fallout 4 and continues the story. So we're now living in a world where the East Coast has purified water and the fall of the Institute following the events of Fallout 3 and 4. The show follows three main characters, the Ghoul, the Vault Dweller, and a member of the Brotherhood of Steel. Each character has distinct personalities and motivations, and throughout the series, we see them grow as people as they traverse the wasteland. Lucy McLean, played by the stellar actress Ella Purnell, is the naive vault dweller that comes out into the wasteland in search of her father. She makes a lot of mistakes in the beginning, which she learns from in her quest. Maximus, played by Aaron Moten, is a squire of the Brotherhood of Steel and also undergoes his own character arc. At first, he's this idealistic child that looks to the Brotherhood for a sense of belonging, but throughout the story, he sees that the Brotherhood isn't all it's cracked up to be. And finally, the ghoul, played by the ever-lovable Walton Goggins, serves as a show's narrator in a sense, connecting the pre-war society to the wasteland we find in the show. The show actually captures the general storytelling dynamic we see in the games very well. So it's pretty safe to say that fans of the games, generally speaking, actually very much enjoyed the show. But now we're seeing the show's producers come out and preemptively attack fans for being toxic. Now, mind you, this is just the original game designer and not Jonathan Nolan coming out and saying that. But Tim Kaine came out to attack some of the game's fans as toxic, although he did praise the show. It's a weird sort of attack of some of the fans. Over the past several years, Hollywood has engaged in what the critical drinker called fan baiting, where studios create controversy by provoking and antagonizing fans in order to gain more publicity. The general result of this was the studio saying, see, we told you this would happen. All the fans are toxic and we're innocent. It's a form of marketing that's unfortunately taken hold over some projects in Hollywood. And it seems now that Amazon tested the waters with Tim Kaine's comments. But here's the thing, fans actually like the show. It makes no sense to attack fans when they enjoy the show. I guess it could be because it's been Hollywood's MO for the past several years. So they thought this would be the same case this time around. But Jonathan Nolan and the showrunners actually respected the source material almost to a fault. The Fallout TV series definitely caters to fans of the games to a degree that I think may be difficult for a normie that hasn't played the games would understand the show. Fans of the game understand the game's world through nearly a dozen games, but this show is the first foray into the wasteland by normie audiences. So it's a show that's a little hard to follow if you're not a fan of the games. For example, I tried watching the show with my girlfriend and we had to pause the show every few minutes so I could explain to her what was going on and why it was important. She struggled through it with me, but I could tell it was a difficult watch for her. This is why I now have an understanding why Amazon dropped all the episodes at once and a day early. Normie audiences that have never played the games would get lost in the lore and lose interest had the show been released episodically every week. Aside from the perplexing comments by Tim Kaine, I think that the showrunners knew what they were doing. They may have over-catered to the fans a bit at the expense of normie audiences, but they made up for it by sticking to a binge-viewing model. But what do you guys think about all this? Did you enjoy the Fallout series? 
And did you think it was a good adaptation of the game's themes? Please do let me know down below in the comments. And as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Okie dokie.